Hey guys, welcome back. Easton Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to work some additional examples on finding absolute extrema. So let's jump in. For this f of x, 3x to the 2 thirds power minus 2x plus 1, we're going to find any absolute extrema that occur on the interval negative 1 to 8. We always want to start off by finding our critical points, and to do that, we're going to need our first derivative. So 3 times 2 thirds is 2 x to the 2 thirds minus 1 will give me negative 1 third minus 2 plus 0. So here's our derivative. All right, we know we can find critical points by setting our derivative equal to 0 and finding any places where it would be undefined. For both of those items, it might be a little bit easier if I rewrote this as 2 over x to the 1 3rd power, or even maybe changing that back to a cube root, minus 2 equals 0. All right, so first, I'm going to note before I start solving that now because I have an x to the 1 3rd in the bottom, I'm going to have a critical point at x equals 0. I know that I can't divide by 0 at any point and that the cube root of 0 is 0, so that would make my first derivative undefined. So I've got that as my first critical point. Now let's see if I can find any more by solving. So first thing, I'm going to add this 2 over. So 2 over x to the 1 3rd power equals 2. And I'm going to think of that as 2 over 1. Then multiplying by that x to the 1 3rd to get it out of the denominator, I have 2 equals 2x two to the 1 3rd. Dividing by 2, I get 1 equals x to the 1 3rd. And then to undo the 1 3rd power, I can cube both sides or raise both sides to the 3rd power. 1 to the 3rd is still 1, and so I get x equals 1. So it looks like I have two critical points, one where x equals 0, and the other where x equals 1. Now what I want to do is I want to evaluate my f of x function at each endpoint, negative 1 and 8, as well as at each critical point. You might find that making a table of values helps you stay organized during this process. So placing those values doesn't really matter what order. I like to go in numerical order. I get negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. And then for each one of those, I'm just going to plug it in to the original function and find the y value associated with it. Doing so, I get a y value of 6 for negative 1, 1 for 0, 2 for 1, and negative 3 for 8. Now I just want to analyze that information. The smallest y value gives me my absolute minimum. In this case, that is negative 3. So my absolute minimum occurs at the point 8, negative 3. And the largest y value gives me my absolute maximum. In this case, that is 6. So my absolute maximum occurs at the point negative 1, 6. An interesting thing to note here is that both our absolute minimum and our absolute maximum occurred at endpoints, not at either of our critical values. That can happen sometimes. All right, guys, let's do one more finding absolute extrema. So let's start by finding our derivative. So f prime of x using our chain rule here, that will be 2 sine x times our derivative for sine x, which is cosine x, plus our derivative for cosine x, which is minus sine x. So here we are going to need to set this equal to zero to find our critical points. So factoring out a common factor of sine x, that leaves us with two cosine x minus one. If we set each of those factors separately equal to zero, then sine x equals zero, and two cosine x minus one equals zero. Solving this one for cosine x, that gives me cosine x equals 1 half. 
Now I can get x values here using my knowledge of the unit circle. So the unit circle tells me that on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, sine will be 0 at 0, pi, and 2 pi. And cosine x will be equal to 1 half on the interval 0 to 2 pi when x equals pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay, now to figure out which of these values gives us our absolute minimum and our absolute maximum, we're going to just go ahead and make a table of values and evaluate each one of those in our function. So notice here, two of our critical points, 0 and 2 pi, are also our endpoints. So we don't have to test those more than once, we'll just include them in the table. So we have 0 pi over 3 pi, 5 pi over 3, and 2 pi. Now remember we're getting our y values by taking each one of these and evaluating them in the original function, not our derivative. So plugging these in, we get f of 0 is 1, f of pi over 3 is 5 over 4, f of pi is negative 1, f of 5 pi over 3 is also 5 over 4, and of course because 0 and 2 pi give us the same values for trig functions, f of 2 pi will be 1. All right, so then analyzing these for our absolute minimum, we're looking for the smallest y value, and that occurs here at the point pi negative 1. And for our absolute maximum, we're looking for our largest y value. Notice here we actually have two points that have the same largest y value. When that occurs, you just have two absolute maximums. So I have an absolute maximum at pi over 3 comma 5 fourths and at 5 pi over 3 comma 5 fourths. The same would be true if you had two y values that were a the same lowest y value. You would just have two absolute minimums. All right guys that does it for this video on finding absolute extrema. We'll catch you in a future one.